Hello, I'm Richard Hunter, Head of Markets, and welcome to our look ahead for the week commencing the 22nd of May. This week's been dominated by two major themes, both emanating from the United States. The first has been the political theatre surrounding the raising of the debt ceiling, something that happens from time to time. Concerns that um, uh, almost unthinkable US default uh, could happen if it's not agreed have waned somewhat as the week has worn on and politicians' noises have become slightly more positive. At the same time, the strength of the economic data coming out of the states has poured uh, some uh, question marks over what the Federal Reserve's next interest rate move will be. It had previously been expected that there would be a pause in June, but the tightness of the labour market and the stickiness of inflation means that yet another hike could be on the cards. That being said, the consensus just about is that the Fed may take a, may, uh, a month off in June. That being said, the markets are building on their gains and in the year to date, the Dow Jones is now up by 1.2%. The S&P 500 is up by 9.4%. The Nasdaq by 21.2% and the FTSE 100 is up by 4.2%. Looking to next week, some of the corporate calendar has started to slow down, but on Wednesday we've got three companies reporting. Marks & Spencer have their full, year's num full year numbers. Uh, good run of late for the company, shares up about 24% over the last year. The normal culprits that we'll be looking out for is the food unit, the clothing and home unit, which has seen some signs of uh, revitalisation over recent months, their joint venture with Ocado, and of course their store rotation project, which is basically um, pepping up those stores which had previously been seen as somewhat dowdy. So in terms of their store sales, online sales, and indeed their outlook, there's plenty to go for in terms of Marks and Spence from what they'll be announcing. Also first quarter numbers from Kingfisher, uh, jewel in the crown, of course, for Kingfisher for some time has been Screwfix, which has recently been uh, expanding overseas. And at the same time, we'll see the strength of the home improvement market via B&Q in the UK. Shares pretty flat, up just about 0.5% over the last year and some weakness of late with a 13% dip over the last three months. When we last heard from Kingfisher, their numbers versus pre-pandemic had shown some growth due to their accelerated transformation program, uh, but there were some concerns that the growth may have been slowing of late. In the meantime, um, investors have certainly been paid to wait with a dividend yield of 5.1%. Finally, Aviva also have first quarter numbers, a similar performance in terms of the share price. The shares are up just 1% over the last year with a dip of about 9% over the last six months or so. Insurance premium hikes, inflation reaches into all sorts of places. That's one factor to keep an eye out for Aviva and of course the performance of both its bulk annuity business and also its wealth management business will uh, be very much in investors' mind. Again, investors are being paid to wait, dividend yield of 7.5% uh, and a previously announced buyback programme of around £300 million which will be ongoing. Thank you for watching, have a great week.